Have you been feeling or imagining that you lack confidence, that it's the missing ingredient of your manifesting game, or that you can't be confident in fulfilling your desire unless X, Y, and or Z happens first? You will wanna watch this video as it will change how you see and experience the essence of confidence in manifesting. Hi, I'm Valerie and welcome to my channel on Major League Manifesting with Manifesting Insights so you can live a divine life. Give this video a like, share, and subscribe to be notified about my latest content. Today's video is inspired by a conversation I had with a dear friend in the manifesting community over the weekend. She contacted me, we hadn't talked for a while, and she called me to share the fabulous news that she is in love. And in the course of the conversation, she mentioned that what was so major in this happening for her is that she felt confidence, that she had believed for a long time that confidence was, that it's an external quality that you develop, that you cultivated, um, that it was, that it was something you developed over time from either reading books or from modeling uh, a way of being after some motivational type of speaker or uh, influencer or role model, but it was none of those things. She realized that the confidence was from within and it was this confidence that enabled her to call her former SP and let him know that she had a new partner. And he replied to that, that he respected that. And I asked her how she felt when he told her that. And she said, I felt like a woman of integrity. So she, her state was a state of her state of consciousness or her state of mind, state of being, was a state of integrity. And in integrity, that means wholeness. It means follow through. It means commitment. It's a lot of those attributes that are bundled under integrity, but that in itself is part of confidence as much as confidence is a part of integrity. But in this manif manifesting uh, the SP, her new, S her new partner, that it was a major shift for her from believing that confidence was external to feeling it as an internal motivator or the the internal uh, drive of her state. You might call it, you know, like the hard drive that is running the entire operation. It's similar to that because that is that is part of inner programming is to shift from a belief that didn't bring that inner power and strength, but this catapulted her into a whole new way of being and seeing herself. So when you cultivate inner confidence as opposed to, yes, you can get it from those things I mentioned earlier, from role models, from motivational speakers, from uh, books on self-confidence, from the ups and downs of life and those things are going to that are going to happen anyway but yes that's all part of the experience that gives you more confidence but really 
it goes even uh, deeper than that because otherwise, if we look at, at confidence as something that's coming from the outside, then then why is it that so many people who have reached a certain uh, position in their profession, in their industry, that is really authoritative and yet so many have imposter syndrome. If you've ever experienced that, you know how difficult and devastating that experience can be. And so it's the feeling of not, of inwardly not matching up with the way, uh, with the persona, with the way uh, the person is presenting themselves and they feel that it, it doesn't hold together on the inside. So this is why it's crucial to understand that the true confidence emerges from inside of you. And this is what Neville Goddard talked about when he said, man's faith in God is determined by his confidence in himself. Now, if you're hearing that, you're probably, and maybe this is the first time you're hearing that, or maybe it's something you've been exploring or wrestling with, um, that yes, it can't be layered on as, as I've been saying here, but nonetheless, if you take that statement and you flip it, you can get a new understanding of it. So that really you're saying your faith in God is what is the measure or determines your level of confidence in yourself. So it's to the degree that you have that faith in God. So this is already a very powerful understanding here that yes, if it, it, if it seems diff difficult, doubtful, shaky, challenging, then turn it around. Your confidence in yourself is measured or determined by your faith in God. It's a little, I think it's a lot actually easier to see it from that flip uh, because you're looking at that really, you're looking at the confidence first and you're remembering that your awareness of being is God. And this applies in relationships, whether you're talking about relationships, manifesting your desires in your work or in, you know, in your work, in your family, in having a new home, in traveling, having a new vehicle, whatever it is, whether it's a, whether it seems like a small desire or a big desire, remembering to, to God or source or the universe, it's all one, it's all the same, whatever it is. But it's having that desire, imagining it, and inhabiting the state that will bring you, that you allow to lead. It's very much the same thing. Your confidence in yourself is determined by your ability to surrender to the state you have chosen because that too, it's, it's a form of God. God created all, all of the states are already created. So your mission is to select the one that applies to what you want and to fully live from it. So this is very key in having that faith in God. All the states are already laid out. Creation is finished but it's there for you to choose and that your desires are also motivated by God. Um, God speaks to man through the medium of his desires. Neville also said that. So you, it's listening, it's choosing what you want and listening and being guided in the direction of it. So it's really allowing yourself to be led. And again, that is confidently being surrendered. You're also surrendering with confidence, with faith. These all go hand in hand 
to move you along that bridge, that bridge of incidents that will connect you with this, with your desire. That bridge of incidents is allowing God to rearrange all your circumstances in order for that desire to come to you, who you're going to meet, the places you're going to find yourself in. All of these things go together. This is absolutely key. This is an essential point. This is a manifesting essential to understand. It's all based on surrender. Also, it's the key ingredient of EIYPO, Neville's statement, everyone is you pushed out. And that forms either a mirror or a trigger for your own evolution, for your own transformation. So this again is one of Neville's greatest teachings on this. And it especially comes through in, in, in an intimate SP relationship that is that intimacy into me I see and nowhere is that sense of confidence even more important even uh, that faith in God is that allowing for that vulnerability and that intimacy seeing allowing another person you're seeing into them as they're seeing into you because there's only really the one, the one cause, the one my father and I are one and my father is greater than I. And all of those go together that there is really only one. You are looking at you and you are looking back at you. It's all really the one. That is that deep reflection of seeing into yourself through another's eyes. One of the great... Um, Meditation Masters of India, Baba Muktananda, uh, Swami Muktananda, back in many decades ago, had said that he called it the highest love uh, or the highest religion it, in the sense of religion being to bind, to bring together, is to look into another person's eyes and see that divine love there. This is, this is a very, very... Um, ecstatic high form of the expression of love as a force so this is all part of again that faith in god that supreme confidence in yourself and this also on another level when you have that confidence this also brings inner peace so if you have been finding that having that inner harmony that inner peace has been difficult or elusive that you're doing everything you can to find it and it seems to maybe be there for little short episodes a few moments and then maybe it's gone again something that appears to come and disturb it or that's based on the meaning we add to things or allowing externals to move us out of, to shake us out of uh, or disturb the state that we wanted to, uh, that we wanted to manifest from, to disturb the state. So when that happens, when you can have that very high level of inner peace, this is a huge gift of having that deep, true confidence, that deep, true faith in God and the divine. So that will come without worrying or micromanaging and it becomes actually easy. It's allowing and then letting go. It's allowing and then letting go. It's really let go and let God. That is the real meaning of that right there, that that you don't have to micromanage, you don't have to manipulate, you don't have to force, you can just continue as you are with Neville's wonderful phrase, sublime spirit of determination. It's right there for you. It's, it's confidence that doesn't require forcing anything or anyone. And that deep place of inner silence, that inner stillness, and that is the divine oneness. And in an ancient Hindu scripture, 
uh, the Yoga Vaishista was a sage named Vaishista who wrote this, um, that it's that it's says one is resting within your within the body like you would re rest in a carriage or today we'd say a vehicle if you were a passenger in a car that you are still in calm and quiet the car is going 75 miles an hour down an expressway but in yourself you are steady stable silent and it's inaction or non-action inside of action and um, I believe that Bruce Lee referred to something uh, in a very similar type of quote in fact one of the uh, to be a great martial artist like he was or to be any sort of black belt requires that same degree of inner silence inner stillness inner Heart, inner peace in the midst of those very powerful moves. This is really how those moves are, are done is through maintaining that inner silence. And that's why they appear very quiet, very, very still, very inward. And, you know, the, they, they meet the opponent and wham, <laughs> it's all over for that opponent. You know, you've seen sometimes in some of the um, videos of this little, this little old uh, martial arts master and the big guys come and they, they, they act like they're going to threaten him. Of course, it's a setup, but, but essentially it's to show because he just takes one finger and he sort of presses it into their chest and they all go toppling over like dominoes. But the whole idea in that is that he himself is absolutely rock solid, steady in that silence, that inner silence, that inner, it's called equanimity or equipoise. It's that absolutely balanced eye of the hurricane, quiet and calm in the midst of this intense energy pulsing through. So this is you too. When you have that confidence, that faith in God, that trust and surrender and inner silence and inner stillness, that inner watching everything that happens, this is that true confidence. In the Bible, in Jeremiah 17, 7, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. So really confidence is that surrender. Faith is that surrender. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you. My gratitude to you for giving this a like, for commenting, for sharing and subscribing. Thank you. Love you. See you next time in the next video.